understand and interpret the ideas and actions of one of the world's great leaders. Today, we will have two guests who will be recounting their experiences during a French colonized Vietnam and later when the country was divided into South and North Vietnam. I was a poor young boy when Vietnam was a French colony. The French had imposed a monopoly on the sale of salt, opium and alcohol. The high price of salt caused my family to struggle to make ends meet. The French had imposed the same head tax on both the rich and the poor. My father told me that the French paid much less tax than us even though they profited the most. The French had also neglected the health care and education system. After the Second World War, Vietnam drove out the Japanese who tried to take control of Vietnam. The French tried to reassert the colonial rule to preserve their empire. The French rule was doing more harm than good. Ho Chi Minh, the founder of Vietnam, succeeded to get rid of the French due to effective guerrilla tactics. The French rule and the French and colonial rule no longer divided. Thank you, Mr. Dong Han Tuan. From the recount, the French colonial rule caused disparity between the poor and rich Vietnamese. Foreign rule divided the country. Hence, by driving out foreign rule, the country could then be united again. Now, let us hear from our other guests about the Vietnam War and the reunification of the North and South Vietnam, and how Ho Chi Minh's idea of unity brought his country back together as a whole again. Our independence from the French came at a terrible cost. Many were killed in the first Indochina War. We were still trying to pick up the pieces and move on. Vietnam was divided into North and South. The North became free of farm and was communist. But the South was controlled by the Americans and was non-communist. The country was divided with clearer distinctions. Ho Chi Minh talked about reunifying the North and South and he took entirely free of foreign rule. So the Vietnam, led by Ho Chi Minh, fought against the Americans using guerrilla attacks. They waged long and bloody guerrilla wars against the South Vietnam and the Americans. Then, the Americans lost hold of South, South Vietnam. However, many lives were lost. The price of unity was a heavy, heavy one. After all the war had put us through, can you blame us for hoping that unity can be maintained with less bloodshed from now on? Thank you, Madam An. Now I shall share what we can understand about Ho Chi Minh's idea of unity from the recounts. First of all, we can see from both recounts the effect foreign rule has on the country's unity. Foreign rule causes disparity and rifts between the people, those who benefit from it and those who don't. Ho Chi Minh's idea of unity encompasses this fact that unity can only be achieved if the country is free from foreign rule. Secondly, in order for unity to be attained, the people had to have the same beliefs. Let's draw some examples from the both accounts. The Vietnamese in the North were ruled over by a communist government, so naturally they would most likely believe in the idea of communism. Those in the South, on the other hand, were ruled over by an anti-communist government. Hence, due to the differences of their beliefs, it is clear why Vietnam was divided as such. Lastly, moving on to the result which Ho Chi Minh's idea of unity brought about. Yes, in the end, North and South Vietnam were reunified. However, many lives were lost. Deaths, perhaps, were inevitable. It is clear that Ho Chi Minh had no hesitation to use force, when necessary, to hasten his country's journey to independence and reunification as seen from the long and bloody guerrilla wars he waged with the Americans. Well, this is the end of the show. We hope you have a better understanding of Ho Chi Minh's idea of unity. Thank you and stay tuned for the next episode.